You're in the business insurance zone with me, Steve Savant, national financial columnist and financial color commentator. We're at the Georgia Tome for the NCAA Finals, our salute to March Madness and the Final Four product review. And featured on today's show, disability insurance with nationally recognized disability expert, Marcy When Crowley. it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Well, welcome everyone to the Georgia Dome and we're broadcasting here for the NCAA Final Four. And I wanna welcome our entire national audience of financial advisors and welcome to our expose. This is day four in our expose. If you've missed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's show, you'll be able to check out life insurance, annuities, tomorrow's show with LTC. Get the entire upgrade and update on all these product lines and put yourself right up into the centerpiece of knowledge. And I actually, I have to say, being here really helps us focus on who the players are and to help us focus on the players in DI or all that is disability, I want to welcome Marcy Pruitt. Hey Marcy, welcome to our show. Hi, thank you. Good to be here. Now, if you guys remember, last May during DI month, we had Marcy on and it was a great show. It was unbelievable amounts of page views, clicks, downloads, and forward embedded emails. So it was really, you. you did a great job. Thank you. And what I want to do on this first segment though is, everybody always asks me, Steve, there's so many provisions in any contract. There seems to be so, it's like a big potpourri, a menu, but really aren't there core provisions that we should look for? And what I want to do in this first segment is, is listen, give me the top four, in tribute to our final four, give me the top four DI provisions that I should be looking at when I'm looking at a contract. Okay. Well, there are the final four, the top four provisions. Certainly the renewability of the contract is you, something you're going to want to look at. Is it non cancelable and guaranteed renewable mm. or just guaranteed renewable? And years ago, non cancelable was always sold. And that simply means not only will the product never be canceled as long as you pay your premium on time, but the premium would not go up. We've seen a real uptick in guaranteed renewable products where it can save you as much as 30% in premium. And people feel like automatically their premium's going to go up, mm -hmm. but that's not the case. The carriers would actually have to file with the state, prove loss ratios, and for everyone in that mm -hmm. occupational class, have a premium increase. We don't have a crystal ball, but historically mm -hmm. that's never happened. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to know that historically it hasn't happened. And when we go to our second segment later on, we're going to talk about some of the major players, the top four. And now I'll ask you, I might come back to you on that and say, how did they fare in that? Right. Okay. And, and just to note again, if you are an individual female or maybe the older market or blue gray collar, uh, guaranteed renewable is a nice feature to have because it can save you as much as 30% a year in your premium. So even down the road, five, 10 years down the road, if you had a premium increase, you're still way ahead of the curve if, if you hmm. save that much over well, the years. What's another one? Uh, the, this is a, a big one, the definition of disability and what we hear own occupation. Uh, physicians, it's instilled in physicians to buy specialty own occupation. Mm -hmm. But there's actually today four types of own occupation. Your specialty own occupation, the a modified own occupation, transitional own oc, and any occupation. Wow, well that's too many acronyms, bust it out for me. Okay, so your specialty occupation. That's a definition that would allow you, if you were to unable to perform the important duties of your specialty, like a litigator or a surgeon, then you could go work in another capacity and you would remain on claim. Hmm. Okay. The reality is only 2% of the claims are in a own occupation hmm. specialty because people don't go back to work or they go back to what they know how to do. Well, talk about then the, the others though. So once I'm past that part of the definition, and by the way, are these carriers tight with the definition of own oc? It, it's definitely, that's a, a key provision because that's the basis of your contract, the definition of total disability. So a modified own oc is a great definition that covers the masses. If you're unable to perform the important mm. duties of your occupation and not gainfully employed, that's the caveat, mm. the carrier will never force you to seek gainful employment, but if you did elect to go back to work, then your benefit would reduce accordingly. Mm. Now, can you go ahead and get this pre-approved so you don't have to, have to waste a lot of time and hey, can I get ONOC? Will they actually write me? And are certain carriers really, their forte is this field. They actually specifically like to own ONOC. Absolutely. And when we get to the final four right. carriers, okay. we'll look at that. I'll keep that in mind. Transitional ONOC is a hybrid. That's a newer definition that it models between the specialty and the modified, mm -hmm. where if you, it's a transitional benefit until you're back up to full speed. So if you're unable to perform the important duties of your specialty, you can double dip, so to speak, where you mm. can collect 
and work in another occupation, but once you reach 100% of your pre-disability earnings, then fair enough, your benefit would start to reduce. Give me a little yin and yang here. What's the difference on regular DI for myself and ONOC? What's the difference in money? I might say 20% more to get that kind of specialty coverage? Is it 30%? What do you think um, in generally? I know that's... Uh, generally, it can be as much as 20% more, and, and it's a combination of some of the other features we'll get mm -hmm. into and talk about within the product when we talk about the top carriers. Um, the, and from the lowest tier, which is your any occupation, to your specialty ONOC, that probably is a good 20% swing or even 30%. But if you have a high-end occupation that you really want to cover, I mean, 20% more in premium is not really that much. Absolutely. And again, this is designed for high educated, specialized, technical, skilled, high income earners. So they want to protect their expertise. Before we close out this segment, what about writers? Just are they worth it or not? Absolutely, they're worth it. Okay. We, uh, it de and uh, depending what you're trying to protect. I'm an advocate of the most monthly benefit you can purchase for the longest period of time before you start adding a lot uh -huh. of bells and whistles. So, well, there's so many bells and whistles and writers. I'm just looking at a couple here. I mean, you know, AIB, FPO, Coley. I mean, you want to try to, you got to figure out which one you want to do. But I like your idea, which is let's try to buy the longest duration mm -hmm. and the most coverage we can. And then if we still feel short, then we can go kind of shopping for some of these writers that attach to these contracts. Now, when we come back from the break, I want to talk about not only the four carriers that really I want to really address to, because really I hate to say it, in our world, many times, there's hardly, you see about a, a, a small menu, I would say, of real players. And I want to know right. who those players are. When I'm looking at disability, I feel like it's the unsung hero in insurance. Hardly anybody is talking about it. Hardly anybody it is addressing it. It is an undersold product, absolutely. Well, well after the break, we're going to continue listing the top four disability carriers and rank the final four with Marcy Pruitt. And don't forget to enroll in IULUniversity.com for the best training, education, and sales support when it comes to life insurance for retirement income. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone and we're recording live at the Georgia Dome for the NCAA Finals. Our salute to March Madness and our Final Four product review. I'm Steve Savant with Marcy Pruitt. And remember, you can sign up for at our homepage and order today's materials. And we have a lot to order on DI. So just hop out to our site, thebiz.tv. And just a heads up, before moving forward with anything that we talk about on the show, always touch base with your tax advisor and if you're FINRA licensed, your broker dealer compliance department. We're talking about all that is disability, and we're going to talk about the four companies with Marcy Pruitt, one of our tributes to March Madness, and we're talking about DI. But let's touch on two that we didn't get to because I probably pontificated too much. How about this issue of residual? Now, you know, that's kind of a debate in some of DI spends about who's strong enough in that. Yeah, well, most, uh, we, again, we talk about the total definition in the ONOC, which is very important, but 80% of the claims are residual or partial in nature. So you're either, there's qu usually a crossover where you are mm -hmm. partially disabled and you recover, or you're totally, you're totally disabled and you recover, or you're partially disabled and it becomes debilitating and it's worse. So mm -hmm. there is some time of crossover, and you want to make sure you have a strong residual definition within your product. And I'm sure you have some carrier picks on we that. We do. Okay. And, and then your uh, last is your increase options, whether mm -hmm. prior to a disability, Disability, the ability to increase without any medical evidence once you've initially purchased your contract. Is that expensive to kind of buy a little guarantee there? 
Uh, not really, no. The increase, oh. the cost comes when you exercise it oh, at okay. attained age. Oh. And then yeah. a cost of living adjustment, if you feel inflation is going up, you certainly want to have a provision to increase that benefit or it will be frozen mm -hmm. to the amount that you purchased your policy for. Well, I like little writers. Like you said, I love, love what you said the first segment. Hey, listen, we're doing this only after you've done your longest duration you can get and the most coverage you can. I think that's a great rule of thumb before you even go into rider lands or talk about residual or right. even, in this case, increases. And I see agents all the time. Somebody qualifies for $15,000 a month, and they say, well, I only want to buy... 10,000, but I want cost of living. Well, how many years will it take for a $10,000 benefit at a 3% compounded interest rate to catch up to 15? Right. So buy the most coverage you can right. get. There's some economic leverage here and let's just play that. All right, now let's talk about the final four. I mean, give me your top players and why. Who's your, D I mean, because these guys own a big okay. chunk of the DI market. And, and we're talking white collar professionals. Right. Okay. So in that marketplace, the standard of Oregon is absolutely a top tier carrier, uh, MetLife, Principal Financial Group. Well, I'm sorry, but and that's then Lloyd's of London. Snoopy, that surprises me. <laughs> Honestly, no, Metropolitan. Yeah, surprises great, me. great company. Lloyd's of London. Lo well, Lo well, to back up, Standard probably in in the white. Well, Standard Met, Principal, and Lloyd's. And Lloyd's I love because they're a catch-all. But mm -hmm. we should probably come back to them to hit on the top mm -hmm. uh, um, traditional marketplace. And Standard being one that has a very rich contract, the specialty-owned occupation built in unlimited mental nervous stress, drug, alcohol, anxiety, depression, built in, meaning um, covered like any other illness to the end of the benefit period. That sounds like my contract. I, <laughs> I want unlimited <laughs> mental problems. You have to get through underwriting. Oh. Uh, and then um, they have a in, standard has an enhanced residual where they will pay 100% of your benefit for the first six months, even if you're working part time, meaning you're partially oh, that's disabled. Strong. That's very strong. Most wow. carriers offer that at 50%. Hmm. And then they have a built-in compassionate benefit, which is new. If you are taking time off to work for, to taking time off from work mm -hmm. to care for a significant other or immediate family member, rather, that has a serious illness, you can be paid a disability benefit. Wow, that's so strange. a physician takes off work to take care of their spouse who uh -huh. might have a, a breast cancer issue. Then they would. Does, she, have, does the spouse have to get any kind of no, underwriting? Then? Oh, my no, gosh. not at all. Well, then is that a new, relatively new that idea? That is new, kind of trading on the long-term care uh -huh. concept and also, um, you know, just a sure. lot of people are taking time off of work to take care of, of ill I know, but it sounds surprising members. to have a DI policy cover that issue, right. not to the insured, but to the insured spouse who is not insured. See, it, that, well, no, the, I'm sorry, the benefit's payable to the insured mm -hmm. in the, because the spouse is disabled, right. not the insured. Well, I think that's a unique issue. I'm really surprised that you brought principal into this. Right? Okay. You know, they they become a player now. I they mean, absolutely are player. Uh, Lemur certific, cert, uh, statistics and whatnot. They have had one of the uh, top growth in the industry from a premium standpoint, and they have a great contract. Again, they have um, a, a lot of bench strength for their portfolio. Mm -hmm. They have individual disability, business overhead, buy sell key person, loan indemnification, retirement plans. So they really have, they cover the entire Do you uh, sometimes, portfolio. when you're looking at it, will you, let's say a business has all those needs that you just mentioned. Will you cherry pick and sometimes do some of that with principles, some of that with standard? Absolutely. So, so you really make a really good DI defensive financial plan to use DI with different carriers. We do, and, and as a general agent representing the marketplace, we can, we'll look at the need for the key person and, and maybe the individual contract better suits the mm -hmm. need with one carrier, business overhead with another, key person with another. There are some discounts built mm -hmm. in w if you bundle them with the mm -hmm. same carrier. If you stack them, then there's substantial discounts. But so sometimes the contractual language may make you want to separate them. Maybe. Absolutely. Okay, so well, Lloyd's of London, yes, they catch everything. I mean, you know, like even in the life business, you know, everybody says, well, will this person de be declined? Well, there's no, no such thing as declinable. It's just that can you pay the premium, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm sure, is that the same way in DI? It is. I mean, you can almost write a contract and they'll insure it if it makes sense. But, mm -hmm. you you know, based on you can not be a U.S. citizen, older than the traditional marketplace mm. will cover health problems. So a lot of things where the traditional market won't touch, Lloyd's will come in and, and write uh, very decent, mm. uh, high indemnity amounts for them. Mm. Give me a reason why our producers should do DI with 20 seconds to go. If you are... There are three things that can happen to your clients. They can live too long, die too soon, or become disabled. So if you're not planning for in the event of a disability, then you're not doing your clients a service. 
When we come back in May, when we do DI month, I'm going to tell you about my new technology called Term and invest the difference in DI. Remember, you can watch this show and all our shows this week by going out to our website at thebiz.tv and just sign up on our homepage. Well, that's the buzz on the biz for today. You've been in the zone, the business insurance zone. You're listening to the insurance industry's number one resource for products, planning ideas, carrier information, and interviews you can use. When it comes to life insurance, annuities, long-term care, disability, or group pension plans, we're the news you can use.